Father, we thank you for your presence this morning. Father, I thank you that we can come in here one way, Father. And we can leave all of our baggage. And we can leave changed. Father, I thank you that you are a mighty God. Such a mighty God. So we did this last week, but I just, I just want to do it again because we're on the subject of prayer. So if you guys would just link arms with the people next to you. You don't have to hold hands. Just kind of link arms. Maybe put your hand on the shoulder. And I just want you to pray for the person next to you. Make sure everybody's got somebody. And I just want you to pray for that person next to you. Pray God's will in their life. Pray that God shows up big for them. Pray that God is the God who loves them and who wants everything for them. Pray that they have a destiny in God that they find, that they have a purpose in God that they're willing to fulfill, that they are step in and step out upon what God has asked them to do. Pray for that person next to you, that whatever they're dealing with today and tomorrow, that God would be with them, that everything that they're in right now, that God would touch his hand next to them, that You know, there's so many hurting people and the people next to you don't realize what they need. You don't realize the need that they have. But I'm going to tell you something. Prayer will change that. Prayer will help them. Prayer will stretch forth and touch them like never before. So take just a minute. Father, well, I thank you. Father, I thank you so much. I thank you for the people in this church. I thank you that we, we are prayers, Father, that we are seekers, that we look to you for all of our answers, Father. I thank you that every person in this place, Father, that they have a need and they have a want and they have a will, Father, that you're going to meet. Father, I stretch my faith forth for every person in here, Father. I add my faith to their faith, Father. And you said where two or more would ask, as anything, if they would, but ask, Father, if they would just ask, Father, if we would just ask, Father, if we would just ask, Father, that you would answer. You said if we would seek, Father, that we would find, if, if we would but knock on the door, Father, that it would be open. So, Father, I'm asking for doors to be open today, Father. Um, we're seeking right now, Father, your will in our life. We're seeking for your will for our brothers and sisters, Father, that may be going through something, Lord. Father, I thank you this morning that you're meeting every need in this building. That we don't serve a small God, but we serve a big God. And we serve the God who created the universe. And the God that will answer our prayers simply because we ask. So, Father, I thank you for every need that is being prayed for this morning. I add my faith with that need. That it is done. It is done. It is done, Father. In the name of Jesus, Father, we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, y'all give God a big hand clap. Come on. Come on. Y'all can be seated. Thank y'all for doing that. And I, I, I want to I show you why I want to I thank you for doing that. Can I do that real quick? Because there's a lot of people that have a lot of needs, and I don't want to know what your need is. But if you have a need in here this morning, a desired need from God, just raise your hand. You see why we do that? You see why we pray for each other? Because there's needs that we don't even know about. 
There's people going through things. Can I just tell you, we're a real church. And we're full of, we're, we're a hot church too. In case y'all want to know what that means, honest, open, and transparent about everything we do. But there's a lot of hurting people, and a lot of times we don't know what they're going through. You know, pastor goes through some things. Come on. Pastor deals with some things. I'm going to be real about it. I'm not going to stand up here and say that, hey, my life is, is amazingly awesome and we're doing everything right. I'm going to tell you that, you know, if, if anything else, man, pastors, man, we get attacked too. Come on. But I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to stand in faith with you guys for your needs. I'm going to pray for you guys. So something I want to do. Uh, Matt, do we have those prayer cards? So I know JB had mentioned it, and he didn't even know I was going to do this this morning. Um, but something I want to do this morning, if you'd allow me to, and even if you're not going to allow me to, um, but something I want to do this morning is I want every person, Matt, give every person a prayer card. We may have to go get some more. Matt's like, I don't know if I have enough. But grab the prayer cards. I want every person to grab a prayer card. If you need a pen, Matt, we'll grab some pens. Um, because I just want y'all during service today, here's what I want. You don't even have to put your name on it, okay? I don't even want you to put your name on it. I just want you to write your prayer request down. If you want to put your name on it, that's fine, okay? Because here's what we're going to do at the end of service, okay? I'm going to have everybody come and lay their prayer card up here on, on, the, on the stage, Okay? At the end of service, we're going to lay our prayer cards on the stage. So you have the entire service to write a prayer need down that God brings to you. And maybe some of you are like, I ain't got to wait to the end of service. I'm just going to go ahead and just write my needs down right now because I know what they are, right? Come on. And that's okay. So at the end of service, we're going to lay those up here. And then what we're going to do is you're going to lay your prayer card down. And you're going to pick somebody else's up. And I want you to take that prayer card home this week. And I want you to pray for that person. Like I said, you don't have to. If the need is something that you don't want necessarily somebody to know that it's you, that's fine. Don't put your name on it. But if you want to put your name on it, go ahead. That's okay. Because here's what we've been. We've been on this, we've been on this series. This is week number five, and we've got one more week. We've got week six. And this series that we've been in is Potential, Purpose, and Prayer. Potential, purpose and prayer and so in this series I'm going to do just a, a quick recap of this series because there's some things that were brought out that I really want to bring back over the last five weeks so one thing that I want one thing I want to say is that you know when Jesus went to the cross and I messed some people's theology up when I said this week one and some people, you man, when the first time I said this, some people looked at me like, you crazy pastor, I'm going to walk out of this place. But I'm going to say it again because I think you understand it now. When Jesus died on the cross, he did not fulfill his potential. I know new people are looking at me like, all right, you're going to have to explain because I'm about to leave this place too. Jesus didn't fulfill his potential because he had the potential to conquer lands because he's the king of kings and the lord of lords. He had the potential to become the king himself upon a throne. To overthrow the throne. The physical throne. He had the potential to do anything he wanted. He could have become a Roman guard. He had the potential within himself to accomplish anything he wanted to do. But he didn't fulfill his potential when he left. He fulfilled his purpose. You see, a lot of you guys have potential to do a lot of things. You have potential to become amazing things. But my question is, is that your purpose? You see, we say it like this around here. You were born on purpose for a purpose. You were born on purpose for a purpose. In 1 Corinthians 12, it says this, verse 18, it says, But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them. I want to stop there. Each one of them. Each 
one of them. You see, some of you, some of you believe that you don't have a purpose. Some of you aren't fulfilling the purpose you know you have. Okay? And some of you believe that, that a calling, that, 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 that the calling from God, that that's for pastors and that's for missionaries and that's for worship leaders like Kirk and that's for, that's for other people. That's for people that want to go into the ministry and do something. That's who's got a calling. But I'm here to tell you, you all have a calling. You all have a purpose. You were born on purpose for a purpose. Now, you may have the potential to do a lot of things. But what's your purpose? that you're supposed to be accomplishing. He placed each one. Chris, he placed you where you're at. Dolly, he placed you where you're at. Ethan, brought you out of some things, didn't he? Come on. Gave you a purpose and a plan and placed you where you're supposed to be. He places each of us. So if you believe that you don't have a purpose, you're wrong. Because God's not going to place somebody somewhere that doesn't have a purpose. Y'all, y'all weren't excited about that. I'm going to come over here. God doesn't place somebody somewhere that doesn't have a purpose. Haha, <laughs> see, they got it over here. You have purpose you have purpose I really want you to get that today and a lot of you say well I have a past <laughs> I have a past my wife has a past Lord have mercy JB has a past come on somebody But we also have a purpose. And if we let our past stay in the past, your purpose will come more evident in the present. But we want to hang on to something. We want to hang on to something. And today I really want to talk to you about how deep are you willing to pray? How deep are you willing to pray? Another thing that we brought out during this series is that if you allow pressure to push you out of position, you will miss your purpose. I want to say that again. If you allow pressure to push you out of position, you'll miss your purpose. You see, the pressure of daily life, if this is my purpose right here and the pressure of daily life man I'm just like I've just got to step away just for man just for a little bit because the pressure is too great there's too many needs that I need to pray for there's too many people hurting I spend too much time just doing other things and I just you know man let me tell you let me tell you my week is that okay I don't know what your week was, or I'd tell everybody your week, but I'm going to tell you my week. So here's what I do during the week. So we, we come in on Sunday mornings at 8.30, and we set, this, we set this building up. We have a crew that comes in with us, and thank you, Lord, for the setup crew. Come on. You guys have a purpose. Amen. I'll give you that. So we come in here, and we set everything up. There's nothing in here when we come in on either side. We set everything up on Sunday mornings. I preach. We have worship. Man, I have an amazing time. Then guess what we do? We tear it all down. We tear it all down. We have, we have an hour and 15-minute service, and we tear it all down. And then we go eat lunch. And then we have a, Farrah and I have a, a small group that we do on Sunday nights for some people. And so we meet on Sunday nights. So our, our, our Sunday afternoon nap is kind of short if we even get one. 
because we have it at our house. So we have, a, we have a small group at our house. So then I get up on Monday morning, and I go to my cabinet shop, and I work in my cabinet shop. And I work in my cabinet shop till about 5 o'clock. Then about 5 o'clock I leave, and at 5.30 I've got to be at the football field because I coach Pee Wee football. And so I, I go from 5.30 to 8.30 is when I get home at night. That's Monday. I do that Monday, and I do that Tuesday. Wednesday, I get up, and I go to the cabinet shop, and I work, and I come home, and we have another small group. We get down about 8.30 or 9. Thursday, same as Monday and Tuesday. Some days, it depends on what's going on in the church and what I need to do and who I need to visit and what's going on. Sometimes I work for the church. Sometimes I have to work in the cabinet shop because we've got some bills to pay. And then I go to football practice. Friday, it's church day. That's my sermon day. That's the day I lay everything out. That's the day that this comes together and, and things start happening right here. And Friday night is actually my night that I don't have a lot of things. But guess what I, we do on Friday night? It's when we schedule things to meet with you guys because we want to know what's going on. Anybody that has a problem that needs to meet, we meet, that, we meet them on Friday nights. So Saturday morning, we get up and we have prayer on Saturday mornings at 9 o'clock. We pray for this service. We pray for you guys. We pray for your purpose, your potential, and the things that you have in your life that you want to accomplish. We pray for God's will in this service. We pray for his presence to come in. I want you guys, when y'all walk into this building, come onto this property, that you feel God in a tangible way. And then we do football on Sunday afternoons. We play football. Come on. Come on. Sorry, was KJ here? KJ. That's my boy right here. Let me tell you, and let me tell you, hang on just a second. I'm sorry. I don't want to get up. I want to finish. Let me finish Saturday real quick because that's my last day. So we do football, right? And last night we got done about football about 7 o'clock. So we went home. Fair and I went and grabbed a quick bite to eat, finished up my sermon, finished everything that I had. Um, we ran over because Aaron had went over to, to Ryan's house and stayed and playing with his boys. And so we went and got them. So we got home about 9.30, finished up the rest of my sermon, printed it out about 10, 10.30, and then went to bed and we got up Sunday morning. I'm not telling you this because I'm saying that I'm busy. <laughs> That's kind of evident. I'm telling you this because I'm saying the pressure of what we do sometimes can push us out of what God has for us if we allow it. But let me tell you what real ministry is because some of you don't believe you have real ministry. This here, to me, is not real ministry. Some of y'all looking at me like, that. it looks like ministry to me. <laughs> To me, this is not real ministry. Let me tell you what real ministry is. Real ministry is playing a football game on Saturday afternoon. And one of your boys that goes to church is on the other team. And when you shake hands at the end of that game and you're coming down the line and you see him and you shake his hand and he gives you a big hug and he says, Pastor, says, I'll see you tomorrow at church. That's ministry. That, to me, is making a difference in somebody's life. You say, well, why do you, man, you spend three nights a week at football and Saturday, so that's four to, why do you do it? I do it for KJ. I do it for Caden and Colton, for Aaron. For, I do it for Brody. I do it for Hank. I do it for Jackson and Jovi who cheers. Come on. Those are kids that, that we see on Saturday out doing what they enjoy doing and they see us there supporting them and making a difference in their life that's ministry come on Josh Holden helps coach Mike helps coach come on Ryan helps coach Man, look at the difference at just being out there with people. Look at the difference that it makes. If you're involved, I want to do this. If you're involved in football, just football, it's because that's football season. Basketball, we ain't worried about y'all right now. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to basketball. But if you're involved in football in some way, whether a parent, a student, a coach, 
anything. Stand up for me. Come on, parents. Y'all, man, y'all sitting down over here for. Come on. All right, y'all can sit down. That's why I, that's why I coach. That's why I coach Pee Wee football. You know, I love my son, and my son enjoys football. But that is ministry to me. That is loving on people. And yeah, you know what? If, I just apologize because if y'all ever come to a game, I apologize for how loud I get as, as a coach. Sometimes I don't think the boys can hear me out on the field. I'm just going to be honest. So I have to get a little louder. And during practice, I apologize, Josh, because Josh is on the other end of the field, and sometimes Josh is like, huh, yeah, we hear you, Pastor. Just passionate. Just passionate. But I want to ask you what your purpose is. Because if we allow the pressure of everyday life, if we allow that pressure to push us out of position, if I allowed that pressure to, to say, you know what, I'm not, I'm not going to coach this year. Okay, I've said it every week <laughs> that we have started football that I'm not going to coach. <laughs> I'm not doing this, and I do it anyway because that is ministry to me. That is making a difference in this community. You cannot impact, listen to me, you cannot impact a community you're not involved in. You cannot impact a community you're not involved in. I didn't want to coach when I came to, came to Abilene. I coached in other places. I just wanted to watch my kid play. But I started coaching. Met this bearded dude named Ryan over here that, you know. And then they did something crazy and made me a head coach for whatever reason. I still ain't figured that one out yet. But purpose, purpose does not always mean position. Do you understand that? Purpose doesn't always mean this position. So whatever you do and however you do it, do it as unto the Lord. Because you're impacting people that need Number three. Y'all didn't even think I'd make to number three. I know what y'all were thinking. Uh-huh. Worries, this is, this is, I'm still recapping. Worries not dealt with displace God from the center of our life. And I want to read this scripture, Philippians 4, 6. And I'm going to read this at 6 and 7, but I'm going to read this in the Message Bible. So I encourage you, if you don't have a message Bible and you don't have an amplified Bible, I encourage you to go online and read different things in different um, versions of the Bible because it brings out things that you otherwise wouldn't think about. So this is in the message Bible. It says, don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, okay, we're going to do that again. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers. Letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. Anybody need to settle down sometimes? Okay. Pastor's the only one, and I'm cool with that, but pastor sometimes needs to settle down. I'm just going to, we're going to throw that out there. It's wonderful what happens, and here it is right here. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry from the center of your life. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry from the center of your life. If worry, and this is something that we talked about, this is the big one right here because this is where a lot of us live. I lived here for many years. If worry is the center of my life, 
where is God? Come on. If worry is the center of my life, if Christ has to displace worry from the center of my life, then where was God in the first place? He took a back seat. But if we'll stay in his word, come on, and we'll allow him to displace the worry from the center of our life, amen, then guess where God's back at? in the center of our life. Number four. If your prayers were answered, would it change your world or the whole world? If your prayers were answered, would the world be changed or just your world? You see, earlier it said, pray for everyone. In another scripture we had that we've been over, pray for everyone in every way we know how. But a lot of times because of worry, come on, because of what is centered in my life, my prayers tend to be about me. First Timothy 2, and this is the scripture, it says... The first thing I want you to do is pray. Pray every way you know how for everyone you know. Pray every way you know how for everyone you know. When we prayed this morning, guess what? We were praying for people that we may not have known their need, but they had something they needed from God. And maybe just someone praying a little extra for them would make a difference. And I said this during that week, and I want to bring this back out. Praying for just my needs in the church world that I grew up in. Praying for, my, for God to give me just enough that I can pay my, deal, my bills, Lord. I need just enough, Lord, that, Lord, if you'll, just, if you'll just give me just enough that I can pay my water bill and my electric bill and I can have 20 bucks for gas this week, Lord, that's what I need. If praying for just enough in the, world, in, the, in the church that I grew up in, I don't know about you guys, but in the church that I grew up in, that was being humble. You know what I call it? being selfish because if I'm called to help others in their time of need and I have nothing to help them with have I done my job but if I pray for Lord give me give me more than enough so I can help the families at church that may not can buy food this week. You know what? We helped a family last week that couldn't buy food. They contacted us. We knew them. They don't necessarily come. Farron and I have met them through this whole deal this past year and a half or whatever, and we kind of know the couple a little bit, and they called, and they said, Pastor Adam, they said, hey, um, we don't get paid until Friday, and we have no food. I said, we asked the church that we go to we, we, we told him we had a need for food, and he said they, they turned us down and wouldn't give us anything for food. And I said, make me a grocery list. And I said, we'll get you some food. And they, they sent me a grocery list. They said, we've got, we've, got a, we've, got a, we've got one piece of bread and some peanut butter. It says, that's all we've got. And they said that, they, they sent me a grocery list, right? They sent me a grocery list that had six, seven, maybe eight things on it. Just maybe some jelly and some extra bread, you know, and, and a couple other things. I said, Pastor, if we can, if you just give us just enough to get us through this week that we can, we can buy some food. And so I had to work at the cabinet shop that day. So I gave, I gave, I gave uh, Pastor Fair, I gave her the list. I said, go buy them some groceries. I said, I said, and buy them more than they need. I said, we're not, we're not just going to meet a need. I said, you know what, if, if they're hungry, 
We're going to feed them. And so we went and we bought them, we bought them, we bought them multiple things and took to them and how grateful they were. And then she texts me, she says, hey, we're going to try to make the church because they don't even have a car right now. He gets up early a couple of hours before work and walks to work. And he said, hey, we can't make it today. He said, we were going to get a taxi to that, and, and I was going to end up going to get them, but something else happened, and they weren't able to come. And, and I told him, I said, listen, you don't have to come. I said, we didn't buy you food so you would come to church. We bought you food because you were hungry. Let me tell you, ministry lives in multiple places. And when people are hungry, it breaks my heart. So what will your prayers change if they were answered? Number five, and I'm going to go through this real quick. God needs you to pray so he can answer. You know, the Bible said, we, we did it during, during our prayer. It says, ask. It says, seek. And it says, knock. If I'm not asking, and I'm not seeking, and I'm not knocking, there's no answers, and I ain't finding. It's good English. Y'all like that? It's Arkansas English. I ain't finding. And the door's definitely not going to be open to me. Because if I'm not knocking, because here's the thing, and this is at my house. If you ring the doorbell at my house, it will not be answered. It doesn't work. And I have people that stand outside, and when, when we know people are coming over, we'll open up the blinds right next to the door, right? And you'll, you'll see them. Not that I wait for a while, just a little, and they'll go back and they'll, they'll ring the doorbell again. And eventually they'll, oh yeah, come on in. Didn't know you were out there, you know. But if we're not on God's door, How's he going to answer? Because he said, if you want the door open, you need to. So God needs us to pray so he can answer. Our prayer needs faith so it can work. Hebrews says, let us hold fast to the confessions or professions of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful see our prayers when we ask they need faith for us to stand without wavering but here's the last part of that your faith needs the word to grow if you're praying for more faith you'll never get it y'all just looking at me like I'm crazy if you're praying for more faith you'll not get it the Bible says Romans 10 17 faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. It didn't say faith comes by praying and praying more diligently. It didn't say faith comes by asking and asking more loudly. <laughs> Open he hears me. It says faith comes by hearing and hearing what? The word of God. So if you want more faith about a subject in your life, get more word on it. Y'all should have said amen at that one. That's all right. That was good. That was good. Come on now. That was good. So I've got just a couple of minutes here. I'm going to end this up. I don't know where I'm going to start because i got more than a couple of minutes of notes here. So in Romans 12, it says this. It says, Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. 
It says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what, is, what God's will is. His good will, his pleasing will, and his perfect will. So what I want to know is where are, where are your prayers living? Are they living in God's goodwill? Not goodwill, like, but God's, okay, never mind. Let's just see if anybody got it. Okay. Are you living in God's goodwill? And here's the way I see that. Here's the way I, I notice this. Is if I'm living in God's goodwill, to me that's not, obviously not his perfect will. A lot of people call it the permissive will of God. Now, now I want to I just make a, a reference here real quick. God's permissive will is not living in sin. Okay? Some people think that if I make a choice to live a certain way, then God's allowing me to do that. No. <laughs> Case not. You're making a choice. Come on, to live a certain way. You see, and then I've heard people reference the children of Israel. Well, they come out of Egypt, right? And God's perfect will was for them to cross over the Red Sea, to come into the promised land, to overtake it, and for them to live there, right? That was God's perfect will. What'd they do? They crossed over, they come to it, they sent the spies out, eight come back, said, we can't do it. Two said, we got this. They didn't listen to the two, they listened to the eight. Everything happened. They went and wandered for 40 years without a GPS. Yes, Moses was leading him. Yes, he was a guy, and it's okay. So, get that. Yeah, okay, sorry. So, Okay, so, sorry, so, so in Hebrews, in Hebrews, thir, in Hebrews 3, and I'm not going to go through this whole thing, but I want you to go read Hebrews 3, 16 through, all the way through chapter 4, because it says that the rebellious of God wandered for 40 years out in the wilderness because they disobeyed God. It wasn't his permissive will. He wasn't like, well, I guess you guys, you know, y'all will learn someday and things will happen. So just come on back in 40 years. Just kind of make a trip around the same rock over and over and over. No, they were out there because they disobeyed. So God's permissive will is not living in sin. That's not it. But what I believe God's permissive will is, is when our prayers stop, at a certain point. Chris, will you come right here? Nick, will you come up here? JB, will you come stand over here? Stand right here. And this is father and son, so I want you to, Chris, just you turn sideways here. Hold his arm. Hold his arm. Just hold on to it. Both hands. All right. Here's what I see right here. You ready? Chris's prayers are linked up to what he sees he needs. That's his son. Okay, so hang on to him. And God says, you know what, if that's where you're going to pray, then I'm going to let you pray here. I'm going to let you live here. Because a lot of times we think we know more than God. Because God, if I just had that over there, or if you would just give me this, I, I would be happy. Does that make sense? This is, God, I'm, I'm opening myself up to you here. Would you, would, you, would you open this door for me? If it's anywhere in your will, open this door right here, and I'm going to attach myself to this door. And God's saying, that's fine if that's where you want to live. 
but this is what I've got for you. So stay right there. Chris, I want you to reach out and reach JB. Put your hand down, JB. Don't, don't let him move. Don't, don't let him move. Man, you're supposed to be set. Don't let him move. You're stronger than your dad. Come on. So just reach out. Come right here, JB. Okay. I had to tell JB to move over a little bit. He's ruining my analogy here. If Chris wants to get to, and this is my whole point today, I went through everything I went through to get to right here. Are you ready? If Chris wants to get to the perfect will of God, he's got to let go of where he wants to be. Come on, some of y'all got that. I heard a lot of, mmm, I thought I was going to, oh, yeah. Come on, pastor, preach it now. All right, so if Chris wants to reach the perfect will of God, he's got to let go of where he wants to be. Lord, this is what I think I want. This is what I think that I, I if, man, if I, Lord, if I just had this, Father, Lord, I'm bringing this to you, and if you'll just answer this prayer, this, this would fulfill my life. And God's going, but if you only knew what I had for you, if you only knew that if you would let go of what you want, that I've got more for you in what I want for you. But we can't ever let go of what we want. If Chris would just let go of what he wants, he could live a better life. Thank you, guys. I know y'all are clapping for me because I came up with that. I know that's what it's for. No, I'm just kidding. Our prayers sometimes stop because we only pray a certain distance. We hang on to what we feel like. And God's got something much better. I want to say this. And I've mentioned this, and I'm way over time. I hope y'all are okay. We're at an hour and 25 minutes today, just so y'all know. So, <laughs> if Farrah and I had held on to what we had and where we thought we needed to be, we would never have launched a church in Abilene, Texas. My cabinet shop was doing great. I had more work than we could take in. It was amazing. But when God told me, sell it, because I have something for you, you know what I did? I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to sell it. I don't want to move. I kind of like the life that I have right now. I kind of like being able to pay bills and have extra. I kind of like having a, can being able to take vacation after 20 years of marriage and not being able to do anything because we struggled so much. I kind of like being in this position. And you want me to what? Okay, Lord, so you want me to you, what? So I can go take a church over. Right? So you've got some, you got a church ready for me, right? We don't have to build it up. We can just come in. Congregations there, worship pastors there, man. We can praise, we can worship, we can preach, we can have a good time, right? God said, no. I said, but God, that, that would make sense to me. <laughs> right? Come on, that, 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 that makes sense to me. Right? I don't. I don't want to, what? You want me to sell everything I have, and you want me to go where? And do what? 
I don't even know anybody in Abilene, Lord. I knew my sister. And you want me to do what? Surely there's a church, Lord. And this is, you guys laugh. This is my, this is my conversation with God. This was my conversation. I know what? And then it's like, well, fine. Then you're going to have to make something happen. He goes, okay. Oh, <laughs> boy, I opened myself up to that one, didn't I? wouldn't change it for the world. Sold a cabinet shop. A lot of you know this. Some of you guys don't. Sold my cabinet shop. Sold my house. Sold my three properties. Moved to Abilene. Amazing, amazing crew of people that God brought together to, to launch a church. It wasn't us. And he, a year and a half later, he goes, hey, hey, you want your cabinet shop back? Here it is. I didn't have to pay for it. He just gave it back to me. Come on. Let me tell you what. If you'll let go of what you're praying for, and you'll start opening yourself up to, Lord, what do you want? I'm just going to, yes, it's scary. Yes, you're going to have to do things you're uncomfortable with. Yes, you're going to have to meet new people. <laughs> but God is faithful every time. He'll not let you down in any way, shape, or form. If all I have to step on is faith, then I'm going to step. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I can't see a step, so faith better form something when I come down because I'm coming down. I'm taking a step. I'm stepping out. So I encourage you. Where do your prayers live? Do your prayers live here? With what I feel like I want to do? Or do your prayers live away from that to what God wants. Father, I thank you today. Father, I thank you for everybody that is here. You are truly an amazing God. And Father, I love you with everything that's inside of me. Father, I thank you for everyone that is here. So I just want to do this. I don't know everybody in here, so if you just keep your eyes closed and your heads bowed real quick, I just want to give a, I just want to, if, if there's anybody in here that doesn't know Christ as their Savior, that doesn't know the God that I'm talking about, that doesn't realize that my prayers can even be answered by somebody, if that's you, and you're like, I, man, I want to, I, that God sounds amazing to me. And I want to serve him, and I want to worship him, and I just want to be with him. Is there anybody in here today that has never accepted Christ as your Savior? And you say, I want to do that today. Amen. Thank you. So, you guys can look up. So, we're all saved, we're all following God, and that's awesome. We love you guys, and I hope you guys know that. We will do anything from you guys. So we're going to do two things right here, okay? And I know I'm running way behind than what it is, but God will be God. Come on, I had to get this out because next week I actually have asked, Lord help us, I've actually asked JB to preach next week to finish up our prayer series. So I, if I didn't get it all out today, I would have exploded. So I had to get it all out, okay? Um. But we're going to do two things right now. So I want to take up the offering real quick, Matt. Um, ushers, if y'all would get ready if you, to, to take up the offering. If you're giving by cash, 
Uh, you should have received an envelope. If, if you did not, we have some more. Just raise your hand if you do need an envelope. If you're giving by check, um, then just throw it in there. Your information's on there. But you can also, we have a Venmo account, churchofabilene.com. That's, uh, that's our website, by the way. You can go there also and give online. I know well over 50% of the people give online. Um, you can Venmo it. Um, also, uh, church, can, um, yeah. Connect Church of Abilene. Boom. See? Yeah. Eli's got me. That's my nephew. Thank you, bro. So, yeah, I just did that. You can't take it back, JB. Um, so if you want to give, uh, you can give that way. If you want to put it in the, in the uh, red bins at the back, you can do that. We're going to go ahead and pass this. But before we do, we have an offering confession that we say every week. And this is more of a confession, not only over the offering, but over our lives. So is it up there? Amen. So you guys say this with me. As I give my tithes and offerings, I, can, I confess that God is first in my life. I give with a cheerful heart because I love God. In 2019, I am healed, whole, healthy, blessed, and prosperous in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you. I thank you for everyone that gives today. I thank you for everyone that is here today. Father, you're truly an amazing God. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, you go ahead and take up the offering. So while they're doing that, here's the last thing we want to do. And I know I'm way over time. Excuse me for that. Um, but here's the last thing I want to do. You can go ahead. No, no, do, do not put your prayer cards in the bucket. If you put the prayer card in the bucket, send it back down the line and get it back out. So, here's what I want to do. I want everyone that filled out a prayer card, and I hope everyone did. I want you to come up here, and I want you to lay your prayer card down up here. And then on your way by, I want you to pick up somebody else's. So it's going to be a mad rush. We're going to do this all at once. We're going to just come up here. We're going to throw them up. Don't throw them too far because people don't have that, that long of arms, JB. It's kind of like you can't really reach, but that's okay. So I, I love JB. Y'all know I love JB. I wouldn't make fun of him if I didn't. Um, we even have a little shirt with a dot. Anyway, so um, <laughs> there's a whole story behind that. I'm sorry if everybody's missed it. So, all right, so on the count of three, so you guys go ahead and stand up. On the count of three, I just want everybody to walk up here. We're going to get rushed, Kurt. Get the water hoses. So on the count of three, I want everybody to come up here, lay your card down, and pick another card up, and then just, just go back to your seat. Ready? One, two, <laughs> three. Come on. Just kidding. Jealous for me, loves like a hurricane. I am a tree, could be the weight of his wind and mercy. And all of a sudden, I am unaware of his affection, gifts, my glory. And I realize just how beautiful you are and how good your affections are for me. And oh, how he loves us so. Okay, so. Sorry, Kirk, I didn't mean to cut you off. That was good, too. That sounded good, too. Man. Man, we got an amazing worship team. I'm just going to let you know. Come on. And if you've got any type of musical ability, which I do not, but if you have any type of musical ability, we could use some more people. Right, Kurt? Come on. See, I only said come on like twice today. That was good. So take that prayer card and pray for that person this week, okay? That person needs you to pray for them this week. That need on that card needs to be met and you can help meet it. 
Amen. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for allowing me to preach longer than I said I was going to. Our hour and 15 minutes, an hour and 30 minutes. Now, it's all good, right? Come on, God's good. We love you guys. Appreciate y'all. Y'all be blessed. Y'all have a great week. You're dismissed.